There we go. Alright, we're back. Woo, yay. Time to actually make that character from the last episode that nobody watched because uh, it's like two and a half hours long. Who would do that? So, for all of you who don't remember, we're making a rogue. We're making a stick rogue. Uh, we didn't decide if we were going half-orc or halfling, so we took the time before we hit record to figure that out. <laughs> we're going half-orc. Uh, not sure if we should, but you know it's gonna be hey. it's gonna be really funny to be um, a big guy with a big stick. A big sneaky guy with a big stick. A big sneak stick. Oddly enough, our stats are just fourteens, and then there's like one eighteen. I do like the stat spread of halfling better. I actually think it works out a little bit more as we manage to squeeze out a point of dex, and we still have enough strength with our tomes to get everything we need and con and intelligence are the same, but, like, why be small when I could be big? All right, what skills do we want? Uh, we actually want bluff, balance, good, uh, diplomacy? I don't think I want diplomacy this time. Disable device. Uh, hold on. I don't need either of those. I don't need that. I don't need that. I should probably get used magic device, but I'm lazy. I'll get one point in tumble, so I have it. Uh, search is good. Spot's good. Open lock, that's good. Do I need jump? You have the jump spell, I don't need jump. So I guess I can get... I don't know, I'll get hide and move silently in case I stealth. I'll get swim so I can swim, sure. Alright, so what am I doing with all these skills and why am I getting them? So balance, we get balance, that way we stand up after being knocked down faster. We get bluff because one of the feats we're going to get, Improved Faint, gives us an attack that automatically bluffs enemies, and it actually cares about your bluff skill in order to succeed. If you do bluff them with that Improved Faint attack, they should turn around, I believe. I know Shiv does it. I want to say Improved Faint should also turn them around, so you can actually make enemies whiff spells and attacks. Like when the Ogre does their combo attack, you can literally make them just combo into a wall. If Famine Reapers are about to shoot, um, like, a polar ray at you, you can make them turn around and they just shove it into the ground and it just does nothing, which is super useful. And also, you can sneak attack them even if they're aggroed on you for a few seconds, so it's super useful. A uh, Disable Device lets you actually take the traps that you found and disable their devices. You turn them off, they don't work anymore. Woo, yeah, no traps. Hide, monsters don't see you easy. Move silently, monsters don't hear you easy. Open lock, same thing as disable device, instead of instead of turning traps off, you turn locks off. So now you can open doors and stuff like that. Search, you gotta find the traps to fix them up. Spot, lets you notice them, as though there's sort of danger in a general sense in your general area. You still have to search them out, but having the spot at least tips you off if you don't otherwise know or just remember that they're there. Swim makes you swim faster, and you can hold your breath longer underwater. Tumble lets you do like backflips and shit, and you take slightly less damage from falling, so that's cool, I guess. There's a bunch of other skills here. Um, please get use magic device if you actually want to min-max shit, because you can use things like Wands of Shield to make yourself immune to magic missiles, which is great, because if you've ever had a champion caster, um, champions would be the equivalent of, like, elite or extra strong generic enemies or something, or a boss or whatever. Really, just any really strong enemy that has a magic missile or equivalent spell, like chain missiles or force missiles or something. Oh boy, getting hit by that really sucks if they deal extra damage on each hit and deal extra elemental damage on each hit, and throw dots on you with each hit, and then they shoot a magic missile at you that hits five times at once. So being able to use a wand of shield that makes you immune to that, makes you immune to that, and accessing scrolls of resurrection to bring your allies back to life after they die. There's a ton of useful things you can do with use magic device, because it lets you access consumable items that you can't otherwise use, because they're magic. Wands and scrolls, mostly. Super great. Um, I'm not getting it, because I'm a lazy jackass, but, you know, you probably should, so do that. Yeah. Um, we're not going to worry about jump. Normally we would get jump, but we're playing with a druid who's going to have the jump spell, so we're fine. Um, jump 
soft caps at 40 for your actual jump height and the jump spell caps at 30 <laughs> so that's going to be most of it right there um, the rest will just come from having a base stat point here and there or if nothing else epic levels at some point if you're really that concerned about it but it should be 40 literally just by existing with the spell buff on so it's not really relevant we don't really need anything else we could get haggle if we cared about prices we could get diplomacy if we just wanted a social skill for more checks or whatever or we can put the rest of the points into tumble so we can do fancy tumbling sooner but we're probably not going to need it because we are a dex build but we could backflip sooner. Do I do I max tumble just so I backflip earlier? <laughs> I'm gonna backflip earlier, I guess. That's probably fine. Yeah, we'll backflip earlier. Uh, and then for feats, I don't think we can take two-handed fighting. I think we have to do a feat swap for that. Yeah. So instead, we'll take Improved Faint. Improved Faint is that feat I was talking about. Tactical melee attack. A melee attack which also bluffs enemies, enabling sneak attacks for a short period of time, and it deals plus 2 W damage. Uh, we don't get it for the plus 2 W. Like, we take the free damage, but we literally don't care about it. It's got like a 6 second cooldown, so it's super fast. You can use it all the time. And hey, uh, enemies are bluffed. Woo, yeah, bluff. Pretty good. Um, what is our alignment? Our alignment is going to be neutral, because I said so. And let's randomize this until this guy looks cool. Because mm. I don't really feel like actually thinking about... <laughs> okay, that last one might have been a bad idea. I actually feel like thinking about what I want to make this character look like. I'm good with that one. Let's go with that one. Ooh, yeah, rogue. Also, Alori is here. Say hi, Alori. I don't know if you said anything yet. Hi, Alori. You can't hear it, but I'm giving her a look. This was a mistake. I should have gotten a drink before this. Eh. I know that feeling. Well, geez, with how long it's taking this thing to load you in, I probably could have. Waking on a shore of flotsam, <laughs> memories of a large white dragon striking your ship come flooding back. All right, so this little thing I'm typing in chat slash UI layout load and then. Whatever the oh, name that you put down oh, for it, you ain't undead, are you? sets all of your UI stuff, like your hotbars and whatever, to the way you normally have it. If you want to, can you move? If you want to save the way you have it, just type slash UI layout save, and then whatever you want to name that file. And then when you have load, you just Instead of putting save, you just put the name of whatever the file is. Then it just pulls all this stuff oh, up. Awake. It's great. Oi, you ain't undead, Got a couple things to go over. Uh, first off, the bio, always the most important thing to do. So I like noting down what um, the build that we're doing is. So Rogue 20. Oh, hold on. Wait, what's a... Uh... 20 stick rogue ah, you're awake. big Boy, bonk you energy dead, you? much helpless bonus such sneak very uh, very hork yep there we go Dead, 
There we go. And then I got update my last past life. We got another rogue one. We played a rogue, now we're playing a rogue. Booyah. Look at me. We want to spend some uh, points here. I don't think we have any universal trees we care about at all. You ain't undead, are you? Um... You could make an argument for trying to put at least a few points in Vistani, but we're going to get haste boost from Thief Acrobat, Can you so move? we don't need that quite as much, right? Yeah, Thief Acrobat, haste boost. Um, but we could still try to go like 6 points for Deflect Arrows or 11 for Quick Draw and Double Strike, but I don't think we're going to because um, we've kind of got our hands full with... Our other main trees over here. I don't plan to ever put a single point into Mechanic, uh, just because I don't really have the stuff. I don't plan on using Harper Agent, because I'm not going to bother with Know the Angles. We don't have the points to go into Vistani and get a bunch of good stuff, and there's no real reason to go anything in Falconry. Um, like, we could, if we just wanted to do max helpless damage, like, sure, but we're already going to have 50%, so we don't need to go up to 80%. Even though I technically could, I like going into Assassin for the sneak attack and for the execute and stuff like that. So we're actually going to put our one free universal point into Inquisitive, because the first core, not only does it give us plus one to attack with all weapons, which is nice, but we get plus one bluff, which is nice. And then in half work we got four racial points, so obviously we have to get the first core. Then after that we're just going to get plus two to hit and plus two to damage with a two-handed melee weapon. And then we'll grab a free will save. So our will save is one. Now it's two. All right, yeah. Spend our daily dice. This little thingy in the top left over here. Ah, oh, you're awake. Oi, you ain't undead, are you? This guy's not gonna shut up for a while. Please ignore him. Jeets is very ignorable. <laughs> Even though I really like him. So you get to roll Can one silver roll every day for freebies. So don't forget to do that. Grab yourself some free experience. And in this case, a potion of stone skin. Because that's just what we have. Always want to open up your social tab and go to the Who sub tab just to let it load all of the people in the game. Oh, that way, if you ever do anything with grouping oh, over here and you actually you? look at LFMs, you can actually see their names instead of just see, like, anonymous or a blank thing or something. It just makes it easier. Also want to go to your feats and go to your past lives and then your epic past lives and pull out your stances. Ah, you're there awake. we go. Oi, you ain't so you get dead, different you? stances based on which epic past lives you have. We'll get more into that later on. But basically when you reincarnate or when you hit the level cap, you, you can go back to level 1, or if you're only doing an epic reincarnation, go from level 30 to level 20, and you get an epic past life, which gives you your choice of a stance. Um, technically right now there's like a whole sphere and karma system, but that's only going to be relevant for like ah, a awake. week or two. Oh. Dead, no more than a month after the recording of this video at the absolute most. Heaven forbid whenever this thing gets uploaded. So I'm not even going to go into how that works because it's not going to be important. So I could for posterity's sake, but who really cares about that? So basically the way it is going to work is you, as far as I know, whenever you hit the level cap and you want to do an epic reincarnation, you just pick a sphere so to speak a type of epic past life that you want whether it be arcane like enchant weapon martial like double strike primal like ancient power or divine like ancient blessings they might come out with a fifth one i'm not saying this because i actually they've actually like said anything i'm saying that purely on the basis that i know they're planning on coming out with more epic destinies and depending on what happens with those they might make a fifth sphere and just shimmy around what is where they might also just lump them in with ones that already exist honestly could probably work either way but who really knows they're changing a bunch of stuff and you get a passive bonus for each stack of that specific past life you have for instance having ancient blessings passively gives me plus three physical resistance rating however if that is my 
divine past life stance, I get five positive, negative, and repair healing amplification. You can only have one past life stance active from each sphere at any point in time. So you'll see the way I did it is I got one stance from each different oh, excuse me, sphere based on the kinds of characters I play a lot. I mostly play melee, so from arcane I got enchant weapon, gives me a plus one bonus to the enhancement of the weapon, making it have a little bit more accuracy and hit a little bit harder. I got double strike, which gives me a chance to do double damage. I got ancient power, which gives me extra attack, which is accuracy, and oh, extra damage awake? if it's Boy, a two-handed weapon. Dead, but technically it says if you're fighting in two-handed fighting style, so this might actually work for bastard swords and dwarven war axes if you're using single weapon fighting style, air quotes, single weapon fighting style, i.e. that's just the only weapon you have, or if you're doing sword and board, like strike through vanguard or something. Um, I don't actually know if this works, I never tried it. But it says in two-handed fighting style, so if you pick up the two-handed fighting line, and that is the one that the game considers as your active ah, you combat awake. style, oh, then this should dead, actually work, you? which would be super useful and really cool. And then Ancient Blessings for healing amplification. Healing amplification lets you take Can in you more move? healing. So if you get healed for 100 points, and you've got five positive energy healing, and that 100 healings you got was positive energy, well, that makes you heal for 5% more, so you actually heal for 105. This is whenever you get healed, whether from yourself or someone else. Physical resistance oh, reduces the wait. damage you take oh, from physical attacks by a percentage. It is not a linear increase. The first point of pure art does reduce the damage by 1%, the second point it does it by slightly less than 1%, so there are move? diminishing returns, but on the other hand, as you're able to get more enemies do more damage, so you're fighting against higher flat damage, so a lower percent a lower amount of increase of percentage decrease is more raw damage reduced than the last point would have been worth because the enemy's damage is also going up because you're at a higher level and can get more. I don't know. It's real. Look, pure R is good. Nobody cares if it's actually diminishing or not. It's a good stat. Get it. Ancient power we kind of went over, but passively you get hit points, and then more hit points every 10 character levels. We already went over double strike, but the passive bonus you get AC and more AC every 10 character levels. And enchant weapon we already went over, but you also get 1% absorption to acid, cold, electric, and fire damage. Absorption is just percent damage reduction for those elements. There is also magical move? resistance rating, which is comparable to physical resistance rating, except for magical damage instead of physical damage. Magical resistance rating and absorption stack. So you can seriously reduce the amount of magic damage you take if you have good magic resistance rating and absorption of the appropriate element. Ah, it's usually awake. really hard to get both, dead, but if you? you can somehow get both to a good degree, you can just laugh at very specific kinds of magic damage based on your build. So you'll notice we got these little swirly things move? around the uh, stance toggles over here, that just means they're active, and you'll notice that happens with a lot of stances. Heroic past lives, you can see these are just things I've accumulated over playing the game a lot, and they give you different bonuses based on what they are. We're not really going to go into it a lot, but just, you get things that are good. If anyone's curious, I can go into what you're actually getting. Um, same with racial past lives. You get things that are good, and they give you stuff. That's about it. Can you move? Uh, right, that guy doesn't stop talking. Yeah. And then we've also got these things called inherent charisma, inherent melee power, inherent spell power, inherent racial action point, all these things. These are from t uh, tomes. And oh, I've got a plus eight supreme oh, tome on this wait, character, dead, meaning I get up to plus eight to all six base ability scores. Um, basically just for existing. So as long as I don't delete this character, and I play the same one, and slash or reincarnate them, I maintain all benefits from all of these inherent tome bonuses. Now, as far as the ability score stats go, 
those don't all activate at level 1. You'll notice this section with level 1, level 3, level 7, etc. It's all gated. So even if you have ah, a awake. plus 8, that's it. I'm talking to this guy just to shut him the hell up. Uh, did we decide if we're doing the... We're doing the normal thing, right? We're not skipping this time just so people can see it. Yeah, though that means I'm not going to have a uh, stunning blow until we leave. Shit. <laughs> I mean, that's not a big deal. No, but it's kind of like, well, damn. There goes one of the biggest benefits was also having it before you would have gotten, like, Maul or Roar or something. Yeah. But that's fine. I mean, you can still, like, stunning blow and then use your attacks while they're stunned for setup and then chain it back with Roar instead of try to, like, pre-prep the Roar, you know? Mm -hmm. And then not have those attacks active for part of the fight. If okay, what there. The said We're not actually true. going through the story stuff. No this is just so you can mostly see the gameplay the things. So anyways, so it's road. level gated. So even though I have a plus 8 bonus, I can't access that plus 8 bonus from level 1. At level 1, I can only get plus 2. I can get up Come to on. plus 2. I have plus 8, but I can't use all 8 of it at level 1. When I'm, say, level 11, I have now been able to access this plus way? 5 of my plus eight if my tome say say i only had a plus three inherent charisma bonus when i'm level one i have plus two when i'm level three i have plus three when i'm level seven i still only have plus three because my tome caps at plus three you get however much of the inherent stat as you can based on basically whichever bonus is lower the tome bonus or your max potential level bonus, right? So if your level only allows up to X and your tome only has up to Y, whichever one is lower is the one you're getting in that moment. But they can both change because as your level goes up, you unlock a higher max potential bonus, or I'm sorry, you unlock a higher accessible bonus of your potential, but as you get better tomes, the max oh. potential of that bonus increases, but you need to be a higher level to access all of it, right? I have a plus 8 though, so once we hit level 22 and higher, we get this all one. 8 of it. But at level 1 we only have plus 2, but it's still pretty good. Um, same thing for all these other stats, except they don't care about level. Inherent magical resistance, melee power, physical resistance, racial action point, range power, oh. and spell power, none of those care. Literally all of these just work. I don't know why Inherent Universal isn't on here, by the this way. Way? way. I'm genuinely just confused. Because you would think it would be. I don't even know why I'm checking on these other things, because it shouldn't be on there on. anywhere. But I would think it would be on here. But yeah, not only do I have... If you're wondering why I had action points at level 1... If you have three racial past lives in a specific race, you get a racial action point. And if you have an inherent racial action point tome slash point, you get another one. On. I've got two inherent racial points and two races that I have my third past life in. All of these past lives, every single kind of past life stacks up to three times. Epic past lives, racial past lives, Heroic past lives, like you notice, I have three fighter, but two rogue, and one warlock. You'll notice right under the name of warlock, there's just you were a warlock in a past life. That means you only have one. Under rogue, it says acquire two times, and then you were a rogue in a past life. That means you have two. you notice under fighter, it says acquired three times. So you can still only have up to plus three for heroic ones, which are based on your class. All different kinds. Um, there's also iconic past lives, but I don't even own iconics, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> We can only have up to plus Come three on. of those. So I've got two races with plus three for two racial points, and the inherent plus two. So you notice this little four AP spent here. One, two, three, the camp's four here. on the action point cost. So it all adds up. So we've got four that we can spend even from level one, even when we haven't otherwise earned anything through leveling up, that we can spend, but they can only be spent in your racial tree. Come and we've on. got one that we can spend in your universal tree, but not anywhere else. So there's zero action points remaining, zero racial, zero universal, but five spent. 
if I hadn't spent these, you would say where it says it zero racial, it would instead say four racial if I hadn't spent any of them. But if I had only spent two of them for whatever reason, it would say two racial because I had spent two, but I still had to. And Universal would say, you know, one That's if right. I hadn't spent it or whatever. I think that covers most of the stuff to, to start with, aside from just uh, don't forget to set up your bars. I don't need that. I'm not using it. Um, skills. So sometimes you'll need to pull off a few skills. Bluff is down. I probably don't plan on really using it, but I'll put it over there. Uh, same with sneak. That can just be over there. Uh, search. This way. Open lock. But we need to pull out disable device because it didn't already have it on the bar. On any of the bars, and we do need that to take down traps. Though you don't really usually ever have to actually click disable device. If you talk to or try to use the trap box after you find it, it'll automatically start trying to disable it. But still, it's nice to have down if you just want to hover over it and see what your skill is at on the fly. Um, same thing with bluff. I don't plan on actively using the bluff skill directly. I plan on using it through attacks like improved faint. But still, it's nice for the same reason if you just want to see what the skill is at without having to open your character sheet. Open lock's already down. You actually do have to click open lock if you're trying to unlock a locked door or something. Um, search was already down too, but I don't think we need any of these other skills down here. Some of these are octagons. Those are just passives. Some of these are squares. Those are actives. You have to actually click on those buttons to use them, but I don't this think I plan on using any of the other active ones, so it doesn't really matter. As far as all the stuff here on skills go, name, key ability is just whatever stat you get the bonus from, total mod is the grand total of every bonus you have, rank is how many times you put points into that skill specifically when you're leveling up, think of it like training and literally that one skill. Ability mod is just what you get from the key ability, so the key ability for balance is dex, my dexterity is 20, which gives me a modifier of plus 5. So with the key ability of dex, the ability mod is plus 5. Miscellaneous mod is just from everything else. It's just kind of the lump sum of all the other things that aren't specifically trained ranks and the key ability. I think that covers most of the stuff from the start. At least from good old, I literally just loaded up my character. Oh, wait, one more thing. Um, this paw tab in your Here inventory. So you want a weapon or not? Pick your favorite companion that you have accumulated over the years and summon them because they're cool. Go to the horseshoe tab and drag out your favorite horsey that you've accumulated because you can ride them. Except not here because the mount is suppressed, that doesn't matter. But normally you would be able to. So Jeets wants you to do things for him. Go ahead, give it a few swings. As you take hold of the weapon, feeling its balance. You can't but he gives you a weapon to help you do it with. Has so you can at least to try see. to fight stuff with his garbage ass stick. Salimus is in the grotto. I shall show you the way. Don't be afraid to take the time to break all of these things on the side if you're a new player. Because if you have literally no resources, getting a couple free points of money or starter potions of cure light wounds can be really useful if only to give you a little bit more leeway in how much damage you can take by having a few extra potions or if you need to just buy a basic Salinas, piece of equipment or something for whatever find? reason or even just be able to fix your equipment a few times as you maybe mind? take some trial and error before figuring out exactly how First, to do things I shall surround us with a protection spell. her spell temporarily prevents you from dying though you can still suffer injuries this effect will wear off when you leave these caves oh how convenient now, I can't fail it. the tutorial because I literally can't die here. What is my hide and move silently? My hide is 10, my move silently is 10. Oh, that's pretty cool. There must be a way to open it. Try up that ladder. You hear the shuffling and wheezing of some creature coming from the corridor ahead. Look at me. 
sneaky half orc. Yo, what is this sneak attack animation with this staff, dude? I forgot that's what it did. Hold on. There we go. I don't know how I just whiffed the first time. I think the range on the sneaking staff attack is like trash or something. With a cleric, Salimus is waiting. Salimus isn't too hot for me. Thanks for putting in the good work. Wait, the twenty percent XP isn't today, is it? I thought it was this weekend. Where's the bloody Sawagin? I think it started today. Look, the door closed behind us. Tree Folk mentioned something about it yesterday. Oh, well, shit. Is that for everyone? Or just VIP? I think I so. it was everyone. Yeah, it's everyone. You'll notice that mostly harmless? That's because you're mostly harmless. You get a reduction to the amount of threat that you generate with attacks, which is great because if you generate less threat, enemies are less likely to attack you because they don't think you're as dangerous. And if they don't think you're as dangerous, well, if they don't attack you, you can sneak attack them, and rogues like to sneak attack. Starting out a fight while sneaking will also help with that, because they will either not see you, or they will see you slightly later, because they still have to take that half second to spot you. So they might see someone else first, which means that they're less likely to attack you, because they just now, didn't see you first. Even if they still see you, they might see someone else that split second before you. And so they just kind of run up the first thing they see, because monsters are dumb, and we like to exploit the fact that they're dumb. You grab the silver key. Time to swim for the Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Perfect turnarounds. Or at least, you know, decent turnarounds. We're speed running the swim section. That's why we level up swim. Right. Okay. So this is actually important since we're doing a rogue stuff. So he can actually teach you here how to uh, disable traps if you didn't already hear it from me or didn't know how to. You actually get extra dialogue if you're a rogue. And you'll notice that you have the option to ask him if you've misplaced your thieves tools and ask him for spares. In which case, he gives you 20 thieves tools. You need thieves tools to disable traps and open locks. You consume one use of your thieves tools every time you try, even if you fail. Even if you don't go all the way in disabling the trap. So first off, we got to take a look around, see if we can find where that box is. Found the control panel. So here, I'll go ahead and show this off for you real quick. When you do something like, say, search, you'll notice this little progress bar. So if I start searching and then I attack, it interrupts it. If I move, it interrupts it. If I tumble, it interrupts it. So you don't actually search unless you've gone through the whole bar and completed the action. Same thing goes for disabling traps. If you start disabling a trap, but you move, you turn around because then you're not looking at the panel anymore and you have to actually focus on the panel, or you just get attacked and someone, I don't know, hits you upside the head, it's kind of hard to focus on disabling a trap when someone's literally beating the shit out of you. So it interrupts you and you can't do it. So you won't actually get to roll to disable the trap unless you finish the action. To also note, thieves tools get consumed one use per attempt. This includes if you succeed. This includes if you complete the action but fail, like your skill isn't high enough or you roll really low or some combination. This also includes if it gets interrupted. So you'll notice that I have 20. If I click on it, I go to 19, but then I step back. I don't get that one back. I've still consumed a use of the thieves tools, but I got interrupted. If I talk to it again, it goes down from 19 to 18, but I succeeded. So I consumed it, but now the trap's gone. The box is taken care of. You'll notice the control panel is opened up now and the spikes on the side from this thing here aren't trying to come out to stab us anymore, so we're good. Except Jeets doesn't trust us, so we have to open the door first. What a loser. <laughs> Imagine playing a halfling rogue when you could play a half-orc rogue. Look at this. Look at this beta. The virgin halfling dagger rogue versus the chad half-orc stick rogue.
hands. Well, I thought it was funny. There she is. Performing some kind of magic. I will open the door. Prepare yourself. Ready? Go. Bonk. According to our employer, there's a secret passage around here somewhere leading to Porthos. Alright, treasure time. So you get slightly different treasure based on the class you play. One thing that is the same no matter what is you will always get some type of armor. Unless you're a caster that doesn't wear armor, then you get some kind of robe. But it still goes in the armor slot, so it's still quote-unquote armor. You get some type of armor. You will always get the ember shortbow and 100 arrows. That way you have access to a ranged attack. Unless, um, I think unless you chose the crossbow. you I forget if it gives you something else if you choose the crossbow. It, it might still give you the ember shortbow. Oh, and if you'll excuse me, uh, my foot is cramping and it actually hurts like hell right now. So uh, this next section is probably going to suck because I'm actually in an excruciating amount of pain right now. And you get the Ring of Water Breathing, which really fucking hurts, and also lets you breathe underwater for a few seconds or something. This is actually our first instance of a clicky. You'll notice that it says, one out of one charges, recharged per day, one. So if we toss the ring on, we can't suddenly breathe underwater or anything. Not that there's any water here to test it on. I guess I could probably go back over to the pond of water over there to really show you, but take my word for it, we can't breathe underwater. But now that we have this ring on, if we click it, we cast water breathing. And now for a minute and 30 seconds, you are able to breathe water. Super useful. And you notice that the one in the corner changed to a zero. And if you actually get the tool tip for the item, oh, I'm really glad the pain in my foot is going away. Oh, that sucked. Now the green bar is empty and we have no charges because we used the magic in the ring. So some items in the game will be clickies because you take the item. Sorry, my mouse is like broken, so sometimes it doesn't work properly and it literally just looks like I'm doing stupid shit for no reason. So sometimes you have these things called clickies, right? Because you take the item, you stick it on your bar, and then you click on it on the bar. See, it says the ring of water breathing is depleted when I clicked on it. That's because I already used the charge. My character actually, if you pay really close attention to where he's standing, it's like he tries to start casting it, and so he goes into the animation, which has the model start in a very specific position. So if your model's idle animation is in a different position, it'll actually reset to it, because it tries to start it and then fails because there's no charges, which is really funny. But you just stick it on there, so you just click it and use it. That way you don't have to keep the item equipped all the time because it doesn't actually passively do anything for you for being it on. It only works when you cast the spell from it. And then you can get a short bow and some arrows just so you have access to some level of ranged attack. You feel a stiff draft My from somewhere in this room. Tingling. There's something Perhaps fishy the in hidden this room. passage to the Try village is in around. here. secret door. So same thing how you can do with traps and looking for the control panels to disable them. You can do the same thing with secret doors, which is really great. Now, I will say it's kind of a shame that we basically skipped this first quest, <laughs> because I actually really love the characters and the dialogue in this one, and it's a lot of fun, but this is the very first time we're doing it, so I'm trying to just kind of show you like a couple basics of just, this is how certain things in the game work, albeit not everything, right? It's just a few things here and there. Now, why on God's green earth there is no Ember Quarter Staff on here, I don't know. So there's literally nothing here I want. Also, she gives you an Ember Longbow when the chest just gave you an Ember Shortbow, which I have to seriously like. <laughs> Bro, why is this an option? <laughs> so I literally don't care what I get. Uh, I'm going to take the Great Axe because uh, I think it would be really funny. That's it. That's the reason. Look at that. Half orc, ember, great axe. You'd swear I'm a barbarian, Stepping but no, the I am the rogue. Ha <laughs> ha right. So he gives you the tutorial to figure out how to bind your character. So you pop out, 
you talk to him, and then he tells you to come over here, and you'll notice on the mini-map, the little mug icon is flashing. That's because that's where the current quest you got that you're toggled onto, and you'll see this one's highlighted, and I can highlight other ones. Whichever one is highlighted is the one you're toggled on. Tutorial how to bind your character. It'll flicker on the map, whatever it is that you want to go to to do that quest, and if you're too far away, it'll take this little yellow pointy arrow-ish thingy that goes in that direction until it pops up on your mini-map and then it flickers. So that way you can always know where you're going if you don't know where you're going and you can find out where to do your quest stuff. So you can either use the E button by default to interact or just click on things. Pretty standard game stuff, wasty to move. You can use Q to cycle targets through non-combative options, and then tab to cycle through um, hostile enemies and stuff. You know, there's a bunch of little control scheme things I could go over, or just how do attacks work, click to swing. Your bonus is how accurate you are. The higher the bonus, the better chance you have to hit, which you add to your D20 to land the attack. Your damage bonus, which is how much damage you add on top of the die that you roll for your weapon's base damage, the critical, what you have to roll to attempt to get a critical, and how high your damage is multiplied by if you do get a critical. You know, I, I could go into a bunch of things like that, but some of that stuff is just so basic gameplay that it would almost be better fit for its own video of sorts. But I actually think that's probably going to do it for all this, uh, for this first one, unless uh, unless you want to come over here. Where the hell are you, anyways? Who, me? In my normal spot. Oh, there you are. Here, so I'll go ahead and show you how to add someone to your party. So we've got our druid friend here, who is using a sickle, like an absolute degenerate. Your facial expression didn't change at all, which was extremely disturbing. <laughs> so if you want to invite someone to your party, you can right-click on them so that they're your target. Find this little cogwheel thing, click on it, interactions and options, and one of them will be invite to party. You can only do this if they are not in a party and you are the party leader. If you are not in a party, you are... Well... You're the party leader of one in a party that doesn't exist. Look, just you have to either be by yourself or be in a party, but be the leader, not just a member. And you invite them, and then they get a prompt, and if they say yes, they join. Woo, yeah, join. But I think that's actually going to do it for the first one, just to show off a little bit of making the character. Uh, a few basics of setting up quick bars, like I put things that were just toggles on that will always stay on for the rest of the game over here because they're in a spot I'm not really going to be moving my mouse over to click a lot, but I still like to make sure that they're on and just see what I have. Things over here that I would use more in combat, like the first bar is buttons I actively push, the second bar is control plus buttons you actually push, you know, stuff like that. And then a couple other things that you use on occasion, or maybe outside of combat, but on a semi-regular basis, or just give you a number that you want to check up on here and there. I really should have gotten a drink. Probably. Maybe I'll do that between recordings. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. So there's a few little things here and there that you can just see just from kind of keeping an eye on things. But I think that covers the better part of, hey, look, it's a video game. Have fun. Play it. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. And I think we'll probably go through all of this little tutorial island, as I like to call it, affectionately call it. And then once we leave, we'll probably take a break between the recordings to actually set up a bunch of stuff that we normally do but can't because we can't get off the island without skipping the storyline, which makes everything look different. And, uh, I don't know. It's the first time we're doing it, so we figured we'd show you how it normally looks. And then, you know, because then we'll be off the island, then we'll be able to actually get some of these other things, and you'll see what that stuff is later on. Though I will say, if you either don't much care 
to see how the island changes as you interact with it. And this is basically exclusive just to Corthos Island. You can't really do this with other areas of the game because this is the tutorial place. If you do choose to skip the storyline, you can still come back to the island and do the quest anyways. It literally just puts you in the version of the world that is quote unquote been completed, but you haven't completed it, so you can still get like your first time bonuses, your quest rewards, and things like that. As a side note, this is called the snowy side. You'll notice it is snowing. The other side, spoiler alert, is called the opposite of snowy which will be pretty obvious what it is later. You can only interact with people that are in the same version of the island as you. So if yours is snowing, you can only interact with people whose version is also snowing, who's, who, uh, who have not completed the final quest on the island. If you have done the final quest, you can only interact with people that have also done the final quest. If you skip the storyline to leave the island to go out to the rest of the game proper, you are automatically put on the side that has completed the final quest, even if you haven't, right? Even though you haven't, because in order to skip, you would have had to have not done it. Otherwise, it's not skipping, you're just leaving. So if you skip, you get put on the side that has completed the island, even if you haven't, even though you haven't. So just keep that in mind if you're ever trying to play with a friend, just make sure you're on the same side of the island is all. And anyone should be able to skip it. I don't remember if you can't skip it, if it's like your first character or the first time on that server. I, 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 don't, I think you can skip it even if it's your first character on that server. I don't remember if you can skip it if it's your very first character ever or not though. I, I don't remember exactly what the stipulations are, but I think at least, I don't know, I've never really seen a time I can't skip it, but the last time I would have possibly been unable to skip it was so long ago that I wouldn't remember that anyways, and who really cares? It's not like it's not a fun enough story to go through anyways, so it shouldn't be a big deal. But just if you're ever trying to get a friend into it, keep that in mind. Otherwise, I think that's going to be it, and we'll... See everyone next time as we do some more actual gameplay stuff and probably stop pretending to be a glorified barbarian. Okay, bye! Say bye. Bye!